Hi, I'm Trevor Lund from RevTrev.com and Harvest Community Church, and welcome to Spirit Life Coaching. Yeah, so I've changed the name from the uh, Pastor's Minute to Spirit Life Coaching because really that's what I've been doing with these uh, weekly videos at uh, Harvest Community Church. And basically what we do, what I do is just kind of expand on the message on Sunday and kind of give people a little bit more to chew on, a little bit more to think about, and uh, a little bit more to, to put into practice in their lives. And you know, you can get this part and just go with it because there's lots of things that we talk about that help you live the life of the Spirit. What What is the life of the Spirit? Paul wrote to the Galatian church and it's uh, Eugene Peterson translated it this way. He said, uh, since this is the life you have chosen, the life of the Spirit, let's make sure you don't hold it as an idea in your head or a sentiment in your heart, but work out its implication into every area of your life. That means you'll not compare each other with each other as if one of you were better and another one worse. You have far more interesting things to do with your lives. Each of you is an original. Live creatively, friends. You know, <laughs> we need to not just hold these ideas in our head, you know, and, and yeah, anyway. <laughs> Um, I want to give you today, we're going to talk about uh, three ways that I know I'm trusting God. In this walk, we want to trust God. We need to trust God. He is our sovereign. He is our king. How do you know if you're trusting God? Well, here's three ways that I know I'm trusting God. The first way is, uh, am I motivated by faith or by fear? What do I mean by this? Well, let me tell you a story. A few years ago, I was uh, candidating at a church. And, um, you know, they asked me to come speak a couple of times, and they were going to decide on whether or not I would be a good fit for their pastor. And the second time around, uh, I... I <laughs> <laughs> Gotta tell you straight up, really good people, lovely people, very conservative, conservative people, and um, uh, yeah. Anyway, if you know me, you'll you'll know the rest of the story. But um, the second time I spoke, I, I told them, I said, "Listen, you guys, I, I want you to make a decision out of faith and not fear, because Paul says anything not done out of faith is sin. So that is your only option. Uh, what do, I'm not telling you." what you're to do with that though. I'll tell you how to make the decision, not what decision you need to make. You can ask me to come and be your pastor out of faith or out of fear. It could be that you think God is going to do amazing things as we come together and that's a that's a faith thing and that would be great. I'd love to come if that's your level where if you you call me out of faith. You can call me out of fear thinking that no one else is going to come here and this guy's available and you have me come and you know what? I don't want to be here if you're calling me out of fear. Conversely, you can ask me not to come out of faith or out of fear. You could call, ask me not to come out of fear because you could be afraid of what would happen to your nice little church here. Or you can ask me to, not to come because you think God has something better in store for you. Like maybe your leadership is going to develop here or maybe there's that perfect person that God has in store. You know, whatever you do, make your decision out of faith and not fear. And they did, and I never was there again. Anyway, but that's not... <laughs> the point is... Um, I, I follow that in my my life. In my, if I trust God, I am making my decisions out of faith and not fear. Secondly, am I following the path of peace or am I following the path of least resistance? When God is our sovereign, when he is our king, the benefit to us is that we experience peace in our life because we trust him. God will keep you. He will keep thee in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee before he trusteth in thee. Um, Isaiah 26, 3, Old King James Version. Um, and what, uh, when I say, and when I ask, am I following the path of peace? You know, does it feel right here? Am I anxious about this decision or anxious about my, even my walk in general? Am I anxious about something? Well, what, maybe I'm not trusting God. Probably I know I'm not trusting God, but how do I, how do I navigate those waters? For me, 
it's not so much choosing the path of least resistance over the path of peace. Often I choose the most difficult path uh, just by default. If someone tells me I can't do something, uh, that's the exact same thing I want to do right now. So <laughs> some of us, we follow the most difficult path and not the path of peace. Others of us, the majority of people, follow the path of least resistance rather than the path of peace. The path of peace, again, is you've got that peace. It's not the easy path. It's not the path sometimes that makes the most sense. It's the path that sits well with your soul. And you feel at peace with God because you trust Him. And as you trust Him, you get that peace. The third question I ask myself, uh, am I able to be at peace? Uh, uh, am I able to be at home in His presence? Listen, we all have busy schedules. We all have busy days. And too often, we think we're busy instead of the fact that we don't recognize we're not trusting God. And we don't want to get in His presence. You know, one of the things I was struggling with, with uh, after the death of my dad was I knew I was angry at God. And I wouldn't go and be alone with him. I wouldn't go in that time. I would read the Bible and it would just be rote and it'd be like, you know, just, just, it was hard. It was my heart that was hard, right? But it, it doesn't have to be anything that traumatic. Sometimes we just, we're like little children. If, if, if you know, we're <laughs> Adam and Eve in the garden, you know, we, we've discovered we're naked and we, so we hit ourselves. You know, we don't want to come and face the consequences. We don't want him to say no. Ah, listen, your God is king, and that's a very cool thing. You know, he can be trusted. And uh, if you're noticing that you haven't been able to spend that quiet time, alone time with him, okay, what do you do? Start spending that quiet time, alone time with him. Make that space available. Come to him and say, Father, I don't know what's going on. If I need to trust you more, show me how. And <laughs> he'll show you. He will in his love and his mercy and his grace. Final thought I want to leave with you today is the more you know God, the easier it is to trust him. Because he is a good God. He is amazing. He is fantastic. He is wonderful, spectacular. I mean, just consider the heavens. Consider the earth. Consider, consider his great love for you. And, and spend that time there until it sit, moves from your head to your heart to your actions. That's the best thing you can do. You know, uh, have a great time. I, if you got any questions, you can email me, revtrev at revtrev.com, or come to church. And uh, if you're in, your, in South Edmonton or anywhere near Beaumont, you know, we have people coming from all over the place uh, to uh, join us at Harvest on Sundays. And uh, feel free, drop me a line, let me know how I can help. I'm Trevor Lund. Have a great day.